and there it is I've got my gussets made I've got my feet made I've got my top corners made and uh, the front set of gussets have a built-in motor mount all in one piece the first one was a little too tight and I had to beat it on and I ended up breaking it so I came back and thinned it up a little bit so that it would fit in the t-slot a little better and the second go around everything fit perfectly so I went ahead and mounted a motor in there uh, I got to take one of those screws out and buy some more screws because I only had four of that size. Everything else I have is way too long. So I'm going to measure those screws and figure out what I need. And I went out to the garage and grabbed uh, all my lead screws and couplings. I just think I'm going to tinker around a little bit. I want to make a support bracket on the top that will slide down over that round extrusion and lock in and be able to put a 608 bearing in there to uh, control the top of the lead screw. So that's what I plan on working on today is just tinkering in Fusion 360 and see if I can come up with a design. I've got, I've got kind of what I want in my head. Uh, my round extrusions are much taller than my lead screws. My lead screws are 600 millimeters and um, I think I'm like 800 millimeters on my risers uh, I figure what I'm gonna have to do is uh, leave a little bit of room because I'm not gonna be able to go all the way down with those gussets there and I'm not gonna be able to go all the way to the top with the brackets I'm gonna design today but I believe if I design it properly I'll be able to get the full 600 millimeters of travel out of the height I think I'm hoping for so if that works out originally it was going to be 500 cubed build capacity excuse me uh, but maybe I can squeeze a little extra out of the top let me uh, let me switch over here and well let me go back over here to the main screen for a minute so anyway that's that's kind of where we're going to go here in just a few minutes i am feeling somewhat better my head's still plugged up but other than a head cold now i feel i don't feel sick I do feel like I've been run over by a dump truck. I'm exhausted. Everything is just beat, but I am feeling better. So hopefully this thing's going to turn around. I got all my meter reading done today, and that took twice as long as normal. So kind of wipe me out for the day. But I wanted to get this one in. I need to keep. I need to keep at least two a week to keep my average up. So. Mondays is going to be my primary Monday afternoon about 4:30 to 6:30 or 7 right in that range. So all right. Hope everything is going well with all of you. And let me pull up uh, share screen and switch over to Fusion 360 and do a little playing. And I will do my best to keep an eye on chat. Hopefully Everything will work out good. Hopefully, the music's not too loud, but you can hear it. If anybody wants to give me a confirmation on that, I have it very low in the background, but I can bump it up or down a little if I need to. All right, so we're in Fusion 360. Let's go with a new one. And. Now, let's see what do I want to do here. I guess the first thing I want to do is I want to start with my extrusion. So we're going to start with a sketch, lay a piece of paper down. We're going to take that piece of paper and we are going to draw a circle on it. We're going to use this orientation to center everything up and drag out a center and we're going to call it 41 millimeters. Okay, 
That's going to represent my aluminum extrusion with the T-slot. Now, let's see. Need to put my T-slots in there. And a little bit. I could try to modify one of the motor mounts, but I think I'd be better off just to start clean. Okay, so going to draw a line and it's going to be six wide. So I'm going to come over here on the, this side three. Five, six, back up five. Okay. And let's do the same thing on the bottom. Up five and a quarter, over six. That didn't work. Stupid box was in my way. I couldn't see what I was doing. Okay, so there's my notch. Five millimeters deep, six millimeters wide. Now I need my T slot. So I'm going to draw an arc. Three points. Go from here. There. Whoops, I did that wrong. Okay, let's try that again. Alright, so we're going to go from here. Well, did I select arc? I don't know which arc I selected. I think I want arc. For, no, I want a arc. Three point or from a center point. Center point. I was selecting the wrong one. Okay, arc from a center point. So I want to go from here to here. Nope, wrong one. Try one more time. I got it now. I get used to it. So from a center point. So I'm gonna go. From here, here's my center point. Well, it didn't stick. One more time. Arc from a center point. Let's go up here and start here. 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 All right, I'm doing something wrong and my brain is foggy, so let's take a break for a second. Okay, let me stop this sketch. All right, we're well, gonna try one more time. Sketch, draw, an arc. Maybe I'm supposed to do the center point first, I forget. Arc, center point. There. There. That's what I wanted. That's what I needed to do. There. There. Okay, now we're rolling. Cook them with gas. So we go to the center point first. Then we go to the first point of the arc the second point of the arc there we got it I did it the other day just haven't done it enough to have it memorized so there's my T slot 
Okay, so that is that is my extrusion. Okay. So my measurements were from the center of the extrusion to the center of the lead screw okay and I'm gonna make this one the right side I'm gonna make this one the right side bracket excuse me so now we got to make some more circles and we got to get the position right and the position was 42 millimeters out from the center of the t-slot I remember that there's 5 10 15 20 30 40 2 and then the notes I have say 46 millimeters up. In. 20. Get out of there, stupid box. Try it again. Okay. 10. 20. 30. 42. 10. 20. 30. 46 42 by 46 10 20 30 be right there I think I'm still stuck on the arc so Try S. Mark. Okay. Now, let's see what I need to do. Let me get my calipers. Got my calipers and I need to go get a 608 bearing. So a bearing has an eight millimeter inner diameter and I have eight millimeter lead screws so it fits perfect okay so let's set this to now this is going to be the bracket not the bearing itself we need clearance for that center race the inner race Let's see, it's 8 on the inside and 22 on the outside. 8, 16, so let's say 16. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter as long as we clear it, but let's give 22. Let's give it a ledge on the outer side, so minus... 6 23 minus 6 it's 20 17 let's just call it 15 it don't matter it's man we can make it anywhere we want 
just as long as it's not touching the inner race. We're going to make it 15 millimeters. And then we're going to make another one. Circle from the center point right there. I'm going to make it 23 to give it clearance for the bearing. 23. I may have to come back and tighten that up a little bit. So. There's my locations. Now. Let's see. 41. And I'm going to need another circle. I believe what I was using was 46. I'll make it the same as the others, 46. Alright, so. If you're following me. This is my extrusion. It's just there to serve the purpose of keeping me on track. It'll go away. It's not going to become anything. Then, this is a round sleeve with T-blocks that are going to slide into that T-slot to prevent it from rotating. It'll slide down over the top of the riser, and I'll put a set screw through it and lock it in place at whatever height I need to. And I hope I'm thinking correctly. I think that's going to work fine. It's worked good on all my other, my feet and my upper corners. So all those dimensions should work perfectly fine. Then out in space, 42 millimeters off center and 46 millimeters off the center of this because the motor... That should be where the center of the motor is. This should be extrusion of the leg and the motor is clamped onto the leg and coming out. So that should be the offset of where my lead screw center point is. Now let's see I need this is 22 I'm gonna need another circle because it's gonna to have to have a keeper to keep that bearing in. Right now it would just have a flat so let's do another circle. A lot to keep track of. I'm going to do another circle and we made that one. What did we make that one? 23. And we put a wall on the other one. So let's make this 29. That'll give it a 3 millimeter wall. Twenty-eight will give it two and a half. Yeah, let's do twenty-eight. That's the same wall thickness as uh, twenty-eight. That gives this. Whoops. Hold on, I don't want that. Okay, that gives this wall thickness should be about the same as this wall thickness. Two and a half. Okay, yeah. That keeps it kind of consistent. Alright, now let's do a little extrusion. Start making these components and then we're going to have to do the hard part. So, let's see. This one I want to be extrude it, let's say, four millimeters thick. Nice and heavy duty. Turn that body off. Turn that sketch back on. Now this one we're going to do 4 plus the thickness of the bearing. So the thickness of the bearing is 
seven. So eleven. Eleven. Let's extrude this up eleven. All right, now let me turn the body on and take a look at it. And that should be a cup that we can just drop the bearing down into. It is. Okay. So the 608 bearing should lay in there. I don't know what I'll do. The bearing shouldn't go anywhere. It should never come out. So I think I'll just make it a good tight fit to know that it doesn't pop up out of there. What do you think? Nobody's talking. You think I'm heading the right direction, wrong direction? Looking good, looking bad? All right, let me go over here and let me make this, this, and this, and I'll have to zoom in to get them others. This, and this. Ooh, that one doesn't look good. This and this. Gonna have to fix that one. Gotta go in and fix that one first. See if I can just delete it and redo it. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to redo that one because it, it did not come out right. Sketch, arc, center point. Bring it down a little bit now. What the hell? Okay, right there. Right there. Now stop sketch. Okay, so that got it. If not, I would say something. Okay. So I'm not totally crazy. Hopefully I'm on a working direction. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. Shift select this and this. Yes. And so I can get that one. Gift. Select that one. And that one. Okay. Now I'm going to extrude that. Let's see. I want it to be beefy enough that it's not unstable, but I don't want it to be too big. Let's say 25 millimeters. All right, so let's uh, extrude that. 25 millimeters. All right, so that should give me. Zoom out there. Okay, that should give me a piece. Like I said, height-wise, I've got 145 millimeters to play with. So this is dedicated that it is going to go on the top of the lead screw, which is 600 millimeters up from the motor. So that's a given. That has to stay there. But what I can do, what I'm hoping to do, is take this object here and raise it up and then run bracing from it to that because this is going in my T-slot and the T-slot is where my wheels are going to run so the more I can raise this piece the more clearance I'll have for my carriages which I have not designed yet so I'm just trying to think ahead there's no reason I mean it would work perfectly fine on the same plane at the same level 
Um, let's go here, here. See if this was on if this was on the riser, and I put this on the lead screw at 600 millimeters, it would work perfectly fine and do its job. But I'm expecting my carriage to have two wheels either in the front or the back and one wheel in the opposite. So it's going to be a triangle, basically. And then the cross track will mount to the front. So however I design that side carriage, I'm sure at least one of the roller bearings is going to be higher than the other two. And if I can give those clearance by taking this and moving it up, so let's let's go ahead and try that. Let's let me double check that I've actually selected the entire piece or just the outer shell. I don't want just the outer shell. Let's see how this works. That's better. Okay, so now if I take that, I don't want to use push pull because I don't want to stretch it. I want to move it. So I'm going to hit M for move. I'm just going to move it in the Z. Maybe I can just type it in. Let's see. If I move it in the Z, what did I say that was? 11 millimeters? 0.2 millimeter diameter. Yeah, that's 11 millimeters thick. I moved it up for enough for an entire wheel that's gonna be 25 millimeters huh that didn't do nothing did not do anything so let's try that again is Maybe I have to raise the sketch. Turn that off. Like the sketch. Move. That didn't do anything either. Okay. Let me think. This is a whole new animal to attack. In Blender, I could just grab that object and type in raise 25 millimeters. In here, they got to be difficult. Let's see. Let's. I think I might have been on the right track with the bodies. Turn the bodies off. Select this plane. Modify. Five, enter. It did not do it. It did not do it. It didn't even add anything to the timeline here. So, okay, new idea. Let's go back. Got another idea. like that and do a construction offset plane 25 millimeters if I did anything it did it went down I wanted it to go up okay so let's edit that feature 
Change it to negative 25 millimeters. Okay. Well, but it's over the wrong one. That's okay. If I can move it, move. Object. I don't want to move them circles. I don't. too hard on that one. Okay, so where are we? We're here. So let me back that up. Delete it and try it again. Like this one. Insert construction plane. Offset plane. Five millimeters. I want. There we go. Now let's see if it stayed in the right place. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now. Huh. Now I wonder if I need to copy this sketch up there. Take that, highlight it all, modify, be a box that says copy, but there's not. Okay, so we're on this plane. Now let's see if I can click through it. Huh. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I could redraw it. Maybe I should have drew it on a higher level to start with. Hang on a second. Let me turn the air condition or the heater back up. I'm getting cold. <clears throat> okay. There's got to be a trick to it. Let's see. I mean, I know I can redraw it on that new plane and it's a piece of cake, but there's got to be a short way to do it. And I would have thought for sure there was a way just to elevate that thing. Um, wait a minute. Maybe. Let's try something else. This may be the wrong way to do it, but let's get a little tricky here. Select that. And square it up a little bit. Hit the Q button for push-pull. Nope. That's not escape. I don't want to move it that way.
Okay. Get this. Now the Q button. Let's go. What did we say that was? 25? Oh, no, 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 no. Crap. Zero, right? I think I need to go back. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Okay, let's try again. Now let's select it. Q. Ah. Let's stop that offset face thing. There's the offset face. Here's the original part. Here's the original sketch level. I'm upside down. Now let's see if I can select it. Q. No. It is not going to let me do it that way. So I need to be need to be working with the face, not the edge, not the side. So let's go this way. The other one. This way. Here. Come on. Play nice. There we go. Select. 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 Shift select, shift select. That should have them all. Now let's see what the Q does. Q. Go. 50. Well, I'm not sure. Operation cut. Join, intersect, new body, new component. Nope, that's just going to delete it. That's not going to get it. Alright. Okay, let's go back here to bodies. Let's try this. I got another idea. Ha! <laughs> There's more than one. More than one way to get it here. There's body one. There's body two. There's body three. Body one. Okay, body one's the in, inside. Okay, well, while I'm doing this, let me do this. Body two. Body one. So shift. And modify combined. Join those two bodies. All right, so now that's one piece. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Body two, body three. All right, now body three. Copy. And body three, paste. And down five, enter. Now they give us body four. Now, if we go back to body three and delete or remove, delete it. doesn't like that let's do well damn it let's do a body four remove no ah undo that body three remove that's why body three all right so let me take another look at this okay so I think I maintain my place in space in the X and Y axis now I have it, have the elevation I want. Now I'm in a whole new world. Now I got to figure out how 
to attach these two with some bracing. And I'm not sure. Let's see. I don't know, I don't know. I did not plan this ahead, so yeah, bracing. I need I need to connect. I want these two brackets. Let me see, let me back up here. I want these two brackets. This bracket's going to slide over my riser. <clears throat> and this bracket's going to have a 608 bearing in it, and right in the center of the 608 will be my lead screw. I want my lead screw to be exactly center over top of my motor and this is what I have calculated to be the position but I want to raise the bracket that goes on my my frame I want it to be at an angle to give me some more clearance for my roller bearings on my X carriage but my lead screw is only 600 millimeters tall <clears throat> need to make an assembly I have no idea I've never taken I've never done nothing with assembly and let's see what kind of things are in there joint origin rigid group motion link I don't know I'm just uh, just tinkering my way through fusion I'm not I'm not really doing anything specific in any order. I don't need it to be a flexible joint. It just needs to be bracing. No movable links at all. Joint, new component, joint origin. I don't know. I was hoping. Let me see here. Let me see here. What if I... What I was kind of hoping to do was draw a line. What the hell was that? Okay, so let's draw a line from approximately there. There. And a line from there. There. And then fill all this in with plastic. Now let's look at the side view. Uh oh. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. Hold on. Do they need to be connected to those two models? Yes. Yes. So if I extrude this, ah, stop. So if I extrude this from zero up fifty, okay. Now let's see what I got. Okay, that's kind of it. That's kind of what I want now, and I want to cut off this corner. I want to angle that down. On both sides. Okay, do they need to be connected? Those two models, yes. Watch this. What am I watching? Tried to post a link but can't. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on a second. I don't know how to do this, but we're going to try it. I think I say forward slash mod space. Hawk 3D Proto Enter. You have added you as a moderator. There, now see what you can do. Starting to get some of the commands down.
Wiley has a sword, and D has a sword. So you should have a sword now. Okay, I'm going to tinker while you see if you can get a link in there. Alright, so let me rotate this around. And I'm going to try my favorite, so far my favorite button. Turn the sketch off. If I take this and I do a Q for push pull. Huh, that could be cool. That's not what I wanted, but it looks neat. Looks like I did something intentional. Now let's see if I can do that to the top. Now if I select this one and do a Q. Ugh! Haha! <laughs> I like that! Forty-seven. Just junk. Okay, that was an accident, but that's kind of like Bob Ross. We don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. I actually think that looks cooler than what I was trying to do because I was just going to draw. I was just going to draw some straight lines down there and just angle it, but that looks aerodynamic or systematic or something. What do you think? Good slide down there, and I can put a set screw through it to hold it in place. And if I go to top view, should have maintained maintained my location, and I can even get fancier. I love playing with that push pull tool. That that thing just smooths things out automatically by itself, and it, it's pretty cool. So let's see what it does. Let's play with it a little more. Let me select this and Q, push pull. That's. Yeah, I don't like that. I'd rather leave that one alone. I liked it better the way it is. And let's see, is there anything else I need to push pull? Okay, now is that going to... Sure looks like it's beefy enough. Looks beefy enough. I'm, I want to see... Do I think it's going to give me enough clearance or should I raise it more? I raised it 25 millimeters. I don't know. I think it's kind of worth trying. I think it looks cool. But I'm almost afraid there's still not enough room. Was that well that wheels gonna come up right here this wheels gonna be fine I can come all the way up until I bump it but I can put the two wheels let me go back this way I can put the two wheels in the back so there's a wheel here and a wheel here and the other wheels down here that'd be all right and as long as I do a mirror image for the other side I think I'll be all right now the next thing is 25 millimeters of clearance 25 millimeters of clearance is that enough let me see 
I had 145 to play with, so if I pick here, I pick. It won't let me pick in open space, I don't think. And I have not got the dimension tool working yet. Let's try it. Let's go this way. Well, I can just count it. Here's my original plane. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50. So I'm 50. I got another 95 millimeters of room I could play with. <laughs> okay, so let's see what happens. Move, copy, move. What happens if I go back in this timeline? Supposedly, if I change something in the timeline... Is this I move it up fifty? Well, that didn't work. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Let, what if I change that offset plane? Let's try that. If I edit the feature, if I change the offset plane up, let's give it another 25. Let's make it 50. Well, that didn't move it either. All right. So, go back to the copy. Go back. Back. Where the hell did that extrude go? How did I get that extrude in there? Huh. That extrude. Can I move it down here? There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. Yeah. Huh. I must have been clicked on the sketch itself for that extrude. But I was able to move it in time so that that extrude did not happen till later. Copy. Move. Okay, so this edit feature and I moved it. Move it more? Yes, I can. Let's move it 50. <laughs> Let's move it another 25. Enter. Then remove the first one. Then extrude that one. Now I extruded that one. Let's change that because now I got to make that extruded 75. Okay. I can work with that. Now, put the fillets back in and select that and Q button for push pull. Uh oh. Okay, let's just edit this feature. 
edit the first one. Not gonna let me hang on. That was that one. That was that one. Okay, so I'm gonna delete those two and redo them. I'm just playing. I mean, I totally could have been good with that one a minute ago, but I'll bet we can do a little more with it. Okay, and let me turn that sketch off so I can see what I'm doing. Select this, and it turn blue. Q. Push pull. My mouse button is sticking to my finger. Need to wash my mouse. There we go. Okay. Click okay. Now let's see if we can do that to this one. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze, I'm gonna sneeze. Okay, now let's click that one. Q for push-pull. Looks like 49 is all I can get out of it. Enter. Now let's see what it looks like. I wish I could get this. There's got to be a way to move that up. Modify. move I don't want to move the whole thing I just I want to move face up 20 it didn't look like it did anything <laughs> So let's delete that one. That didn't do what I wanted it to. Okay. Uh -huh -huh. Do -do -do -do. I kind of like the the curve drop here but I want I would like to have this let's see if I select this in Q and what it's moving doesn't look like it's moving anything Let's escape on that. Let's try. Try that dot. Q. Nope. Okay. Let's try that face. What happens if I click that face? I don't want that. Close that. Now let's try it again. Select that face. Push pull. Whoa, whoa. Hang on. Four. Eight. Forty one. Two. No, it'll handle 42. 
Nope. 42 is as most it's going to take. Alright, so let's hit enter there. So that gained me a little bit. Okay, so. Yeah, the leg is running right through here, and there's the riser, and the motor's offset. This is the right hand support, and. How much clearance did I gain? I think I gained Let's see. I got to go back and check. I saw a video that said there was a thing you can put in preferences to where it turns on dimensioning all the time so you don't have to do the D button. I've never been able to get that D button to work. But I can count boxes. I'm low tech. I can handle that. So there's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75. So there's 75 millimeters from the top to the bottom. So I've used up half the tolerance I have. I don't think I want to go any steeper than that. So, uh, pop down, the bearing will set right in here. This will slide on the top. I think it looks kind of fancy. I wish I could get this part here up. No, I just tried to drag on it. I thought it would be worth trying. Let's see. There ought to be a way. You know what? I activated that mesh thing. I wonder if that works. Huh. It's not even in there. Not even in there anymore. Wonder why. Create. Modify. Press pull. Fill it. Chamfer. Well, let's, I wonder if it'll chamfer something. Chamfer it. Full distance. Act. No, won't let me select it. Will not let me select it. Now, if I'm just open, it'll let me select it. Okay, so what else can I do? Silhouette split, split body, split face, scale, draft, shell. Chamfer, fill it, press, pull. Well, I used the press, pull, but maybe it'll let, wonder if it'll let me do it again. Apparently not. Huh. Let's see, what else can I do? What else can I do? So I've got three bodies there. I'll tell you what, let's let's do this. Let's go. Lock this all together. Select, shift select, shift select. Turn it into one piece. Join. 
one body with two tools okay that gives me one body and let's call it uh, right hand speed screw support up oh, caps locks on right hand Lead screw support. Okay, now we've turned it into one body. Let's see if that uh, locked everything in and will give me a chance to do some more pulling and squeezing and twisting and stuff. Okay, so if I select that and Q. Nope. 42, 43, 44, 0 0.5, 45, 46, 47. Now, hey, maybe I can get a little more out of it. 48. Nine fifty and it doesn't like fifty, it won't let me enter it. Forty nine error. I don't remember where it was. 48 enter forty seven enter forty six enter I bet it was forty two. Forty-five, forty-four, forty-three, forty-two. Yep, forty-two. That was all it'll give me. Okay, so that ain't gonna work. Let's see what other options I got. This is going to be a booger to print, too. Maybe I'll print it on its side. That. That. Think that's the best way to print it? And just put supports inside where it's going to slide over the tube and the bearing's going to slide in there anyway. You won't see it. Still with me, D? I think we're probably going to have to give that a test run. I don't know enough tricks with uh, Fusion yet to make it any better. I think it's kind of pretty. I was just hoping to take this bottom piece and kind of arc it the other direction. I just don't know how. I've tried clicking on things. Push pull. This is error. Hang on, let me read. Well, shit. Where'd it go? Let's try it again. 
Maybe it'll bring that error back. Q. The fillet chamfer could. Why does it do that? Could not be created. The request. Requested size. This might be occurring at the ends of the selected edges. Try adjusting the size and use multiple separate operations. Check that the selected edge chain ends at a sensible position. And if not, try selecting more edges. Okay. Don't know what that means, but I get the hint. Nope. Country time is hacking on his trailer again. Okay. Yeah, Kira. Kira, I can flip it around. Kira will do auto orientation, but I'm thinking on its side is probably the best option. But I don't know. I don't think I can do much more with that. I don't know what else. I don't know what else I need. I mean, I know that'll work, and that'll give me, what did I say, 50 millimeters of clearance that I didn't have to start with. 50, 25, 50, and 11. Or was it 75? I don't remember. 50, 65, I think it was. That's about it on that part. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that's about all I can do. We'll give it a try. At any given point, once I learn more operations in Fusion, if I want to, I can I can come back and redesign. I may have to come back and redo it anyway. It may not fit. My my positions in space could be just totally candy wampus and out of place, but I think I've got it. I think it's in the right place. My XYZ coordinates or where I intend on them being. But I may have made a mistake in my calculation somewhere. So, uh oh, there goes my bearing. So I should be able to uh, print this up, drop the bearing in it, slide it down. Oh, I better put a hole in it. Hang on. Better put a hole in it for a screw. Okay, so there's the front let's go ahead and put a hole in it because I did forget that on something what was it after on the corner brackets I forgot to put holes in it I'll have to I uh, just have to take a soldering iron and melt a hole in them but that's okay make sure I'm centered is that centered on that center line there I think it is 5, 10, 15. Three. No, it's not centered. Four, nine, nineteen. Twenty nine, thirty nine. 40, 41. Oh, wait a minute. This goes over to here. This goes over to here. Should not be measuring from there. I should be measuring from here. I wish the grid quit disappearing. Maybe I can do it that way. Yeah, let's try it that way. Okay. So the green line is right dead center of the T slot nubs there. Okay, so I can put it right on the green line. Now it's purple because I changed the angle, but I can put it right on that center line. All right, so let's create a hole. Let's put it 
right there, which looks like it lines up pretty damn well on that. That center line, single hole. Distance, let's go distance. Say the distance through is, because I don't want to go all the way through it. I don't want to come out to the other side. So let's go, I don't know, seven. That'll get all the way through. And the diameter, four, and it'll come out to be about three because of my squish. Okay. Hole. Now let's make sure it just went through the one side. Oh, maybe I didn't set it deep enough. I forgot about it being right on that lug. I did not. Did not set it deep enough. Okay, so we're going to go back here. That's easy. Edit feature on the hole. Edit feature. I said 7. Let's make it 15. My God, now it should be all the way through there. Yep. All right. So that'll allow me to put a set screw in there so that it doesn't slide up and down. I think we've got a winner. So let's save this object and let's call it, what do we say? This is the right hand lead screw support. And we're going to save it in round extrusion. Already selected. Save. Okay, let's make sure it's in there. Oh, and I made these the other day. This, I made this piece. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. Um, I was just tinkering the other day and I uh, made a piece. This is going to be a plug that is going to plug up inside the riser tube that is coved out for the bottom. So I can leave the tube cut cleanly and not try to cope out the edge, the end of the aluminum to match, to mate up to the leg. So it's just going to be a little shim kind of thing in there where square cut tubing can slide on and then this will fill in the gap around the contour of the leg. I thought that was a lot easier than trying to manually cut the the tubing in a curve so need to get those printed. I need to print one of these first and see how it works and get those printed and then if it works I'll come back in here and do a mirror image and make a left hand and print it um, let me save that. Let's see. Let's turn it into an STL. Do not send it to a utility. I only have one body. Hit select. And save it to my STL folder and call it the same thing. Right hand. Boy, my fingers are not working right lead screw support okay save that in my STL folder so I can put it on the card should be good there close that window don't close that window no no don't don't close that We should be able to go back to the main screen. Open it back up. There we go. All right. I'm happy with that. That turned out good.